we're going to start recording. Okay. Um, well, hi, I'm Dr. Laura Wood, and I'm on faculty at Lesley University in the drama therapy and clinical mental health counseling program. And I'm joined today by um, two of my students who I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hello, uh, my name is Savannah White, and I am a current second year drama therapy student at Leslie University, current drama therapist in training. Awesome. And I'm Olivia Cosby. I'm also a second year student in the drama therapy program at Leslie. And so um, both Savannah and Olivia were authors on a paper that we've recently submitted from a research study along with the rest of their cohort. They were first year students, now they're going to be second year students, um, which is really exciting. And so, yeah, we were in the middle of having the group drama therapy course, which is a required class as part of drama therapy training when um, COVID-19 hit. And so we had to move the course online. Yeah, what do you guys remember about like when you found out that we had to move this particularly group drama therapy and drama therapy online? Like what reactions do you remember having? I know that I remember just, you know, the incredible disappointment mm -hmm. that I felt regarding uh, the class and feeling like, oh, how, how is this ever going to work? And um, I think that um, really like, just like the fact that we were interrupted in such an abrupt way was again, like just like that heavy disappointment was really difficult to deal with at the time. Yeah. Olivia. yeah my reaction was more like panic based. <laughs> like, how will we ever do this? Uh, and I was an internship at the same time doing drama therapy with kids on the spectrum. And I panicked about I was like, how will I ever do drama therapy through a computer? Yeah. yeah, I think I had both of your responses, both the kind of grief and the sadness and the like, oh boy, we're really going to have to figure this out. And, and we did. And so what we decided to do as a group, it was, there was actually something very cool about it, which is I knew the things that we needed to cover, but I was able to like bring some options to the group and we kind of um, went through a process of deciding together. And one thing we really wanted to get curious about was answering this question about like, what are the challenges of delivering drama therapy in a group format online? And then what were some solutions that we could generate? And so the class was split up into um, co-leadership teams to form and design a group. And then we decided to create um, an action-based research project out of this and collected data from multiple data points. So not only um, you know, having discussions on a chat board about what we were noticing, about what was working, what was difficult. Um, people filled out a template of the group that they offered, um, as well as um, other feedback that we gave to one another after doing the process. And so it was a really robust amount of data that we got to look at and that we worked together to code. And we found the um, overarching themes sort of then surrounded by a larger topic. And so the three areas that we identified challenges in were around technology literacy, um, around social justice issues, which um, feels uh, even more relevant uh, right now as we're looking at everything is going on with um, uh, George Floyd and with access um, and the, the real realities about accessibility when we think about delivering online therapy. And then the third was about translating drama therapy. Um, and so we, you know, explored each of those areas and we talked about challenges and ways that we address it in the, the study that we've submitted for publication. But the kind of the overarching thing that we found was that drama therapy might actually be uniquely suited for working online. Um, so not only in the fact that it creates a space for people to have fun, which with the heaviness of everything that was going on uh, and continues to go on with the pandemic and in our world in general, um, but also like battling Zoom fatigue and finding a way to get in your body um, when you know much of telehealth is just done 
with client and practitioner or clients and practitioner sitting together and that the drama therapist has really unique capacity to be mentally flexible, to uh, improvise when technology issues comes up um, and to bring that kind of spontaneity and playfulness to the table. And so just from both of you, um, tell me a little bit about like what really stood out to you from when you were co-leading um, and what you've learned about yourself as a drama therapist and the skill set that we bring to the table. Go ahead, Savannah. Uh, I wasn't sure whose turn it was, um, but I know that I was so like grateful in a way for the fact that like, you know, we're, we're all about like that yes and, and that like being in the moment and staying with whatever is coming up in the moment and whether it's uncomfortable or whether it's, you know, really emotional um, or, in, or if it's incredibly silly. Um, <laughs> So I was really grateful to have that skill set and that the drama therapy has just continued to build upon that skill set. And that has just really been such a gift in a way, um, especially when working in a format that I think is really just incredibly unfamiliar to all of us in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Olivia, what about you? I definitely like think a lot of the same points as Savannah, but I also think that so often we look at both therapy and education as like very structured. And um, we, we see traditional classrooms, we see traditional talk therapy and all sorts of like media exposure that we get. And like being able to be in a space that was both therapeutic and educational that was so flexible really like sparked those like creative neurons in my brain to start finding new ways to do things and it um the sh the structure of not having a structure was really helpful in like the improvising that happened as a leader yeah yeah and i think watching the group members like the creativity that came out of the process like so even in like i think this is a, a very cool skill set that the drama therapist has that I think also gets translated to the people that they work with or not translated to, but I think like helps bring out or develop in the folks that we work with is that capacity to like go with the flow, to be spontaneous, to, you know, all of a sudden none of us had any of our drama therapy props at home, but uh, you know, a pen becomes a mustache or it becomes a sword or, you know, whatever, like that capacity for the play really created possibility in pretty challenging um, circumstances, I think. And I've been also just loving um, the work that we did in this study. I'm, I'm using some of these principles and I'm about to go into this weekend doing a sort of like mini performance festival with um, a group of folks in recovery. And I'm applying a lot of the things that we found, both creating some structure and leaving space for that creativity, like you were speaking about, Olivia. Um, keeping in mind, like we had conversations around access issues, making sure that people, um, you know, who wanted to participate could participate because of what we found around some of the inequities that really become clear working in this format and making sure that we did time to like train people how to work on the different platforms and programs that we were going to be working with because we also found that that ended up getting in the way of the work being able to happen if we weren't addressing that um, sort of in an anticipatory way with with clients um, and then like applying a lot of the cool techniques that we came up with um, when you all think about some of the ways that we translated drama therapy for working online, do you have any favorites that was like, oh, that was cool how we did that, or I really, I loved that, that way of working online that come to mind? I definitely think about the, like using the role top, or the role play tabletop format yeah. of D&D, &D, but through an online platform and how now I just want to go explore that platform and see how many different ways I can use it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that crossover with um, 
gaming, tabletop gaming, and how we're doing it online, and how we were talking about it in sort of a role context was super cool. Yeah. Savannah, what about for you? I would say that one of my favorites was when we had to submit um, a short monologue prior to our session about something that we thought was really annoying about COVID-19 and um, then having that be um, compiled by the leaders of the group and then being able to watch it as a group all together. And um, that was such a therapeutic experience for me because it was like, I could not only see how some people were having similar reactions to myself, but also people that like, we're talking about some of the same things that I was talking about, but in a completely different way. And so that was just a really great experience for me. Yeah, I think one of my favorite things that we identified as a challenge, but I really felt like, um, you know, we had come up with some great suggestions and I'm excited for those to be shared in our article was around performance. So in drama therapy, we talk about the core processes and one core process is this idea of performance and that performance has um, aspects to it that are transformative when we're able to use it. And the one group came up with this incredible way of you know, having the stage manager, which is such an integral part of a theatrical production, working in the chat box and sort of, you know, giving people their cues when they're going to be entering and exiting. And it really helped create this kind of theatrical holding space by having that role of the stage manager or using like the speaker only view, right? Or being able to, you know, move off stage while we were seeing, you know, puppets or, or different characters come on. And so, I, um, I'm getting really excited about the way that performance, um, and particularly performance in a, in a drama therapy context, can be delivered um, online. And, and um, yeah, I'm excited to see where that, that's going to continue to go for our field as we are seeing that, like, Broadway is closed down till, you know, 2021. Like, major performance venues are, are closed down. And so how are we going to capture... Um, that essence of live performance in a sense, right? It's, it's different than watching a movie. Um, and so I'm excited to see how that continues to unfold for, for drama therapists and for the larger um, performing arts field. Is there anything that you guys want to close out with just about this experience of, um, yeah, working, doing drama therapy and working online or being a part of this research study? Um, that feels important that you want to share? I mean, I, I will say that I am very grateful for your ability to improvise, Laura, <laughs> because um, this was really, truly the ultimate test <laughs> in a way. And so uh, this was the fact that like so much is coming out of this experience and everything I think is just like so incredible so amazing yeah thanks I mean it also like I think this is what's so cool is like it also takes a class of students or a group of people who have that capacity to be willing to be flexible and to willing to improvise and to see impro like that improvising actually can be a gift rather than being a hindrance, you know? Like, I think that's such an important piece about the uh, improv piece is that sometimes people feel discouraged about it or they feel like it's not what I had planned, but really when we sink into that place of being able to improvise, so much um, creativity and connection and spontaneity are able to be born out of it. Yeah, uh, Olivia, what about for you? I mean, also just reiterating like the gratefulness of the opportunity to even lead these groups online um, and the amount of uh, training that we probably wouldn't have gotten with the Zoom platform by just having to lead groups within our class and how we can carry that forward into our professions once we graduate. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that reminds me like as you all are reflecting this idea of gratitude, right, that for some of us the initial feeling was, was loss and then what's born out of it is gratitude and I think like that's so important too, right? That there's space to be able to hold both like loss and, and the challenges around a, a pandemic that come with it and um, space for growth. And like, what an, in, what an incredible um, 
what an incredible skill to be able to work on and to practice and to um, have the privilege to get to hold grief and growth at the same time, um, you know, together as a group. So it was really fun getting to, you know, and an honor to have you all in class and with the rest of your cohort to work on this paper. And I'm excited we're getting to give a little sneak preview and you know, we'll keep anybody who's listening posted on on where it ends up getting accepted and, and published. So thanks so much for joining us on this quick vlog. Um, we're signing off from Massachusetts and thanks so much. Bye.